Good morning. Um, this is a youth lesson for my Iron Gate Baptist um, youth group. Uh, Sunday we decided to hold off and postpone youth until Wednesday. Um, we had a birthday celebration here for Kellen and um, it was just a beautiful day to get out and enjoy God's creation. So we're going to have youth tonight and I wanted to go ahead and post a little video uh, lesson to get us started. And um, I want to start with prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you, God, that you are with us. And um, we just ask for your continued presence to bring peace where there is turmoil and to bring love where there is hate. And we, God, God we know that you are greater than um, any of this uh, that's going on in our country right now. And we just ask for your your influence, for your power, for your um, love and your light to show up through us and um, we just thank you God that you are still here and still at work and we just trust you Lord to open our eyes to what we can do and to how we can um, best help in any situation and in Jesus name we pray amen um, it's been on my mind and on my heart um, because of everything going on with hate and rioting and violence and protesting and um, just to kind of really think about how to best encourage our youth group to um, look at look at all this because it's overwhelming um, and I'm not about to pretend that I have all the answers because I don't and I wish I could fix what's wrong but I serve a God who can and he gives us a guidebook in how to handle life no matter what we're facing. The Word of God is um, our basic instructions for life. And so anytime I am overwhelmed or not overwhelmed or just kind of, you know, wanting to be close to God, his Word can do that reading his word and finding verses and and reading stories of um you know people who are in the bible there are hidden messages there there are hidden treasures i guess might be a better way to think about it because you know the word is living and it continues to open up and so as soon as you read you know like i've read verses and then come back to them years later and i've read them again and because of what's going on in my life or because of you know, something that God's doing in, in, in my life or something new that's, that's happening, I've found something else and I've discovered something else. So the word of God is really like, um, a huge treasure chest. And so it never gets old. It never gets outdated. It never, um, needs to be updated. You know, we have all this technology today that has to be updated and, everything's always kind of constantly, you know, becoming obsolete and, and God's word never does. And so that's the beauty of serving a God who is greater than anything going on in your life right now. Um, you know, there's going to be suffering, there's going to be turmoil, there's going to be pain and hurt, um, uh, because there's evil and, um, it says that in the word. And so reading the word helps you to understand that, as, as much as everything that's happening um, is upsetting to all of us and to God, it's not surprising to him because hate and evil and negativity and, and all the things that are not God, not love, <clears throat> have existed for as long as sin has existed in the world. And um, God gave us the key to unlocking a way out to um, fixing these problems and he gave us the blood of Jesus um, so the best advice that I can give to my youth group is to seek God in, in everything that you're facing and, and all the confusion that you might be feeling about this world that you're growing up in um, if you believe in Jesus and you have that light within you you need to share that light because light um, pushes the darkness out. I have a quote that I wanted to share. <clears throat> I 
Well, let me back up and share a couple things that I wrote down and then I'll share the quote. Um, there are still places of darkness where light has not reached in this world. And um, I think that's why we're still here. I think that's why Jesus hasn't come back yet because um, light needs to continue. His light, his truth, his, his love needs to continue. The gospel, the word needs to continue to be spread to people who haven't heard. And, and yes, there are people who have heard who put up walls and um, harden, you know, have hardened hearts or allow evil to, to tempt them into believing something else or just to be deceived. I mean, deception is a huge issue. I mean, I've been deceived into thinking that I needed to change the way I've looked before or that I'm not good enough or you know, I think we all have areas of deception in our lives because that's how the devil attacks us. He gets in these places in our minds and he takes, he tries to build a stronghold. He tries to build a wall and, um, being aware of that and knowing that that is the way the devil gets to us. A lot of times is, is part of our battle, part of how we can, um, fight that battle and come back at him and say, no, you know, God created me. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. It says that in God's word and I am made in his image. And so you can use God's word in all these situations as your weapon. You can speak it out loud and it becomes your sword. Um, but I wrote down a couple things here. It says there are still places of darkness where light has not reached. So we have a responsibility. Um, if you, if you have received the, the salvation that only comes through the blood of Jesus, then you have a, a gift that needs to be re re given. And, it, and it's not like you give it away and it's gone. It's like, it multiplies. Like if you have a torch and somebody else has, you know, their torch isn't lit, then you light their torch. Well, yours is still lit. And, and then they have, they have light. And so they can go and they can shine the light for themselves to see what needs to be exposed or to, you know, push out the darkness in, in their minds or in their hearts or in their lives or these things that bring us down, this darkness that kind of weighs on us. And we're like, what are we doing? What is happening in this world? How are we going to continue to live like this? Um, God's word is full of goodness and light and it shows us how to treat people. Um, sometimes places of darkness are in people's hearts. Sometimes places of darkness are in people's minds. Uh, it is up to those of us who have seen the light, who walk by the light, who carry the light to spread it and share it wherever we can, with whomever we can. Jesus is the light. His love for others, laying down his own life so that everyone, every human being could be free, cannot be in vain. So we cannot allow what Jesus did to have been done in vain. We have to continue to share and spread and love. Um, and here's the quote. This is by Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. So if you're in a dark room or, you know, it's dark wherever, um, and there's no, no light coming in, it, it's just, it's all dark. Um, but if you turn a light on, it's, it's, nothing's really changed except that the darkness has to leave, you know, light, light is there and it pushes that darkness out. And so then the light takes over. Um, so he said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So the power of love is, is huge. And, um, loving others is is really the commandment that we all need to be um, following uh, especially for young people as you know you all are young but you're tomorrow's leaders and so you have to start by being love and sharing love and giving love in your own circles to start with you know you know, when you see the media and you see the news, you, you want to jump out there and fix it. And, and I feel you. Um, but sometimes you're not able to do that for different reasons. It's not safe. It's not where God wants you to be. But you can love your family and love your friends. And you can um, express, you know, how important it is. You can, you know, when, when you get the opportunity to be around others, 
let them know, show, show, be love, you know, be love to other people. Um, it is up to you. It is up to all of us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see God, God sent him and God is love. God promises to never leave us nor forsake us. Um, it says in the word, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble. God never promised that this world was going to be perfect, that we could achieve some kind of perfection. As a matter of fact, if you if you look carefully, it continues to worsen as time progresses because you're getting closer to the time that Jesus does come back. And as that happens, you know, cling to him more than ever. We all have to grow up in the word. We have to grow up spiritually and draw near to him because he is our foundation. He is our anchor. He is our rock. Um, in so many ways, and yes, it, it's it's hard to see that, but um, the word points to um, this, you know, this way of the world, you know, this evil that's continuing to evolve. I believe that the devil knows that the time for Jesus is near and that, um, you know, he's bringing out forces and it could be political, you know, all these things. We don't know the motives behind a lot of these things. Um, you know, I'm sure we could all say, you know, there's a lot of political things going on behind the scenes or, um, you know, this virus, is it being used to, to control people? And, you know, we, we don't know. I mean, you have to, again, ask God to help guide you through making decisions and, um, you know, just being safe and protecting other people and, and, trying to do the best that you can and, and um, help the people who are in your in your pathway. God did not promise a life free of evil. Evil will exist as long as the earth exists. But believe, and God promises to walk with you, to equip you, strengthen and guide you through the battle. We will all have something to walk through. Just as generations before us did. I mean, there was never a time when... Um, Life was perfect except be in the garden uh, when Adam and, and Eve, before the before the first sin, you know, I think that there was a harmony in a, in a relationship that was open with God at that point, and that's where that peace was. But, you know, sin entered the world, and the world has fallen, and, and the world has evil in it, and it, it's going to continue to escalate until Jesus returns. Um, so... Remember that God equips us. You know, we've talked about so many different stories about the armor of God and how we have equipment, we have weapons, and the the best weapon is the Word of God, to read it, to saturate your mind with, with the things that are truth. You know, the truth is in the Word of God, how to treat people, how to love people, what Jesus did for us. Um, the stories of Bible greats like Noah and Jonah and Moses and Abraham and Esther. I mean, all these biblical stories are there to teach us how to walk it out, how to um, lean on God in these difficult times. And even if you're thrown into a fiery furnace like Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego, uh, Jesus was in there with them. You know, they didn't they didn't burn up. They came out without even smelling like smoke. And uh, so don't forget about God's word is, is constantly feeding us. Um, I love that story. You know, I love that story of, of um, the three, if I remember correctly, they're teenagers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Don't quote me on that because I have to look up, see if I can find their ages, but I know they were younger. And um, as they were thrown into the fiery furnace, um, they trusted God, you know, and God followed through. And so trusting God and believing in him and knowing that he will guide you through whatever you're facing um, is the key to your peace and the key to successfully growing and um, gaining a sense of being able to survive in what's going on in our world right now. Um, fight the good fight. And in the end, the reward of heavenly perfection will be reached. The life you live here in this earth is your gift to God. Heaven is God's eternal gift to you. 
Jesus provides the key to unlock the door. Um, you know, a lot of times I get kind of wrapped up in thinking about heaven and how amazing it's going to be just to walk with peace and perfection and no sickness and no, no harm and no evil and, and nothing painful happening to anybody. Um, and there, there is, that is going to come and that's God's gift to us. But living is also a gift and, um, it's not going to be easy to, um, to walk, walk out your life every day. Um, but anything worth having, you have to fight for it. And so use your weapons, use the word, ask God to guide you and direct you. And one of the things that I want us to do as we meet tonight, and um, we're going to talk a little bit more about a few specific stories, is to find a verse that really speaks to you about how to how to love and how to treat others and how to be love and how to be the light that God is calling us to be. So I challenge you, all those of you who are in my youth group, to seek out either a verse or two or a story, something that um, speaks to you that you can share with the group tonight as we meet. And uh, if there's anybody who's not in our group and you'd like to post something, um, here on either Facebook or the YouTube site, feel free to share um, a verse or a Bible story or something that is a, an anchor for you, you know, something in the Bible that is just one specific anchor. I know it's full of lots of wonderful advice and guidance and, you know, it is our guidebook through whatever storms we face, but uh, if there's something that you'd like to share or spotlight so others can uh, maybe look it up or read it or just you know see what helps you i think that's how we as as a body of believers need to lean on one another and look to each other to see you know how do how do you get through this because um you know i've talked to my family and my kids and there's always going to be somebody who's got it worse off than than you do there's always going to be somebody who's got it better and we're not allowed to choose the family that we're born into. We're not allowed to choose um, race or gender or um, height or, you know, there's so many factors that, that we just inherit, you know, and um, there's a plan and a purpose for that. And so God equips you for what you're born with. He equips you with tools and he equips you with uh, beauty and uh, he gives you everything that you need. And so the best advice that I can give to my youth group is to seek his word in every situation and you will find peace. You will find strength. You will find direction. You will find hope and um, truth because if you're looking at the media and you're looking at news stories, um, you may not always find that. Um, all the answers to every question you may have are in the Bible. It's just a matter of being able to find them woven into a parable or a psalm or a proverb or in the story of Jonah or Moses or Abraham or Esther or others who God spoke to and through. You can be one of the great you. You can be one of the greats God uses to speak his mighty truth. So, um, you know, the Bible is full of stories of, of people and um, God wants to continue to work through you to to make your story and uh wouldn't it be cool to think that your story inspires somebody else because you spread the light you picked up the torch and you passed it on and you continue to be who these original disciples were who followed jesus and um because of them we continue to know the truth and so we all have that responsibility to to be who god is calling us to be um Put your faith, your eyes, your trust in the one who gives and sustains life, you know. And so a couple things that um, I thought about, too, is, you know, we've done some messages on giving shout outs to God for his beauty and his beauty continues to amaze us. If, if we focus on those things, we know that he is good and none of this um, that's happening is is something that God caused um 
And so we need to pray that his peace and his strength and his love would continue to push out the darkness, just as um, the quote that I shared from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says, I'll say that one more time. I don't want to misquote it. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And um, it's just the truth of it. So be love. Share love. Seek God's word in all that you do. And um, bring something or post something that is inspiring that um, others can see and and be inspired by too from the word or from you know some influential leader like dr martin luther king jr i mean his example of peaceful protest you know is is inspiring and um so and he definitely knew the bible so um i just want to close with prayer and challenge you to seek his word to seek god to pray to ask him to protect and guide um, our nation as we're going through this fight and this um, this struggle that um, his light would shine and push out the darkness. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Dear Lord, I just ask for your continued um, presence. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I have so many things I want to share and I get jumbled and I get kind of, um, you know, confusing and trying to express so many things. I'm not a pastor, um, but I am your disciple and I love you. And I know God that you have a plan and a purpose, not just for me, but for all the young people in our youth group and in our church family and our community and in our state and in our country and in our world. And God, I just ask that you continue to open the hearts and minds of those who, um, have not received the light, the, the, the truth and um, salvation because that's where true peace and freedom and life exists. And so I just ask God that you continue to manifest your Holy Spirit in places that um, it has not reached and help us to be a part of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.